With me now is Yat Suleiman. He is the Chief Commercial Officer at EOH. And Ziad, I've been wanting to speak to you for some time. Considering your move from the big heavyweight IBM to EOH, that has obviously come through a turnaround story, to get your side of the story and what it's like moving from IBM to EOH in terms of where EOH is today. Thanks very much, Bronwyn, for the opportunity. You know, it's been a really, really positive uh, last couple of months, you know, just over one year, in fact, when I joined. And it seems like time has really flown by. But uh, overall, really, really good impressions on the company, the value offerings, you know, the interactions, engagement with customers. For me, the most remarkable thing is the receptiveness of the market to the work that we're doing, the turnaround, the positivity. It just seems, you know, the LAs and the opportunities seem the endless. Coming back to that transition from an IBM and, and what you've had to do in terms of the commercial engine for EOH, are you satisfied with the progress you've made? Look, I think in the time frame we've been working with this, the answer has to be yes. You know, it is a work in progress, but all the signs of the trajectory is definitely good. I think, you know, businesses need time to mature. As the mark, you know, as we think about digital transformation, there's lots of opportunity, but they're really two different stories here, right? I think the one is around the receptiveness of the brand OH, the work that we've been doing, and there it's been really, really, you know, delightful for us because we see lots of customers continuing with renewals, we see lots of new customers coming on board, and we see lots of customers that were a little bit unsure at a point in time that are really now open arms, you know, in terms of the work that we're doing, the value offerings and continuing to engage. So that's on the side. The other side is the maturity of the market. You know, we definitely see a willingness to engage in digital transformation. And with our proposition being end to end, we able to look after customers that are moving from legacy into digital, but also those that want to do it slower, right? That want to stay on legacy. So we can do pretty much everything from the infrastructure's into the software and into digital and all things around that. So we've got a really, really good basket of offerings that are able to meet multiple customers' needs on where we are in their journey and what they need. One of the, the big focus areas, of course, the OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, and in the broader information technology landscape, we are seeing OEMs encroaching on many of the smaller players and their territory. What is your relationship with the OEMs at this stage? So we've got a wide network of OEMs. We know we have over 50 OEMs. We've also decided that we don't do all things for people. So what we've decided to do is become quite niche. You know, we've got a tier one basket where our large OEMs sit. And then we have a tier two offering, which is a lot more of the smaller niche offerings. And therefore, we're quite focused on where we want to play, right? So even, for example, some of the large OEMs they have a wide offering. If you looked at the offerings, we know what the market needs. And therefore, we might only use a subset of that large OEM. So the reason we do that is because we know what work the market and where for our customers. And therefore, being agnostic in terms of OEMs, we take the best offerings to our customers. You know, in terms of the encroachment, interesting point that you make because we find that a lot of the OEMs are in fact moving away from a direct model and approach us all the time and say, you have the coverage, you have the skills, you have the know, you have the relationships with customers, please can you represent us on a wider basis? So we're seeing the larger OEMs becoming a lot more focused as well and work with us as eyes. Then we also see the smaller ones that are trying to bring niche offerings in that also need that conduit into the bigger game. You know, So I think we are ideally positioned in order to lift the market and support not only the OEMs, but also the customers based on an ag agnostic model. Ziad, just a short while ago, you mentioned the receptiveness of customers to the EOH brand. The momentum, is it building? Are you seeing expansion in geographies, we have seen, obviously, the EOH management team speaking extensively about the Africa opportunity, the European opportunity in the mid-tier space. Are you seeing deals really starting to roll in? Yes, definitely. I think uh, what we're definitely seeing is that, you know, as customers expand, we have the footprint to be able to follow them. So into Africa, we have a number of customers that have gone there and we follow our customer. 
And we're also seeing OEMs that are now approaching us and saying, you guys are doing really well in the South African market and the European market. Please, could we give you either the distributorship or otherwise the partner status in order for you to represent us in Africa? We seeing that and in terms of Europe and the Middle East, you know, we have a, a really, really good offering, you know, and therefore the ability to replicate our offerings into those markets is something that gravitates them. So that uh, trajectory for us in terms of expansion on a really good base from South Africa into Africa and into Europe makes absolute sense. What we also focused on is how do we take advantage of the efficiencies and optimization in our own business in order to support those businesses. So if you take just one example around, say, for example, digital signatures, you know, in that particular space, regardless of where you sit in the world, you need that. So whether you're delivering it from Africa into you or from South Africa into Africa, doesn't really matter, right? It's a scale business, it's a platform business that's based on volumes, but the offering and the actual, uh, you know, benefit to them is, is immense. So there's no reason why no, anybody can't leverage it from anywhere in the world. One of the key discussion points has been this transition now of EOH from a turnaround position into a growth strategy. And you clearly are going to lead that charge when it comes to the growth strategy. Are you happy and aligned as you hit 2023 in terms of pursuing an aggressive growth strategy for EOH? Yes, we are. So I think the way we've focused our business is really to be quite, uh, you know, harmonized internally. So we've taken a number of businesses, bundled them together in order to make sure that all the niche offerings in a particular space are managed, well-serviced, well-staffed, you know, really, really good skills in take advantage of the market opportunities. So we really have, you know, a few strands within our business that set up for success in order to service customers. But most importantly, we set up our business is that we've created the opportunity in order to work, work across the business units. You know, So for example, if we take uh, you know, AWS migration, it's not just around the migration, but what are all the other services around that we could also supplement and complement. And then if you take infrastructure, whether it be Dell, IBM, HP, or whatever else, you know, we have the ability to service around that and add additional stacks on top of that in order to solve the customer's problems. So whilst we're agnostic from an OEM perspective, the growth trajectory is based on offering that are multiple in facets, but also complementary across a customer base. So really from a technology base, I think we're in a good position where we're able to leverage different opportunities for different customers, but not forgetting that in today's world, you have to be agile. So the agility linked to the offerings in order to deliver for the community, because every team is different. Ziad, you, you also sit on so many different organizations, uh, groupings that are leading the IT trajectory for South Africa. I mentioned a number of different presidential work groups in the IT space. Of course, also the important uh, BRICS grouping and leading the charge on that front. In terms of the EOH brand standing behind you in those forums, are you finding it conducive to effective engagement with your peer group in, in the IT uh, industry globally? Yes, absolutely. I think uh, people have a high regard for the brand. They have a high regard for the turnaround. They really believe in the management and the people of EOH. I think that high regard is something that we can never take for granted. You know, it's something that we need to continuously work on. It's something that we need to be humbled by. I think the growth we've seen in the last three years and the progress means that it makes us hungrier to do even better, to have a sustainable business. But also from a South African perspective, you know, when I talk to my peers, they all have a great respect, you know, for the standing of the company and the value that it adds not only to South Africa, but beyond. And I think we do need to showcase companies like this, you know, to elevate our status of South Africa, not only in the continent, but beyond. So holistically, I think it's looking really good. It's a matter of leveraging it, taking it on. Final question, and it's a difficult one. If you look back on your decision to leave IBM 
in favor of EOH, knowing what you know now and the road that you've walked over the last 12 months, would you make the decision, the same decision? Yeah, look, it's a tough one because, uh, you know, I dearly love IBM. I spent 14 years of my life there, had a really good journey with them and, and pretty much know a lot of what I know because of that company, you know, so I only have this regard for it. But uh, looking back, I think the answer would definitely be a yes. And that's because of the challenge, you know, the opportunity, looking at the great offers across multiple stacks and bases that we're able to take to the market. So, you know, I love South Africa. I love the work we're doing. And really, you know, this complements the other work that you spoke about, bricks and residential units, and really all coming together. I think it is the right decision, and I'm really encouraged and optimistic about the future. Ziad Suleiman is the Chief Commercial Officer at EOH Group. Thank you so much for your time.